Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Hope y'all are doing well. Time for some more draft evaluations. And today we're going to be moving on to a new position. We are going to be doing inside linebacker. And this is going to be another double feature day. There will be another video later today with more inside linebacker talk because there are a lot of guys in this draft that are worthy of consideration at the position. And a few things have happened with our inside linebacker situation this offseason. We have released Bobby Wagner, the greatest inside linebacker in franchise history, and it's not close. And we are supposedly switching to a hybrid defense that will heavily utilize 3-4 concepts, which means we're going to have two inside linebackers on the field instead of one. And obviously this is something that we were starting to utilize last year, but it's going to be even more, more of an emphasis in 2022. So the need at inside linebacker has increased significantly while what we had on the table for us at the inside linebacker spot has diminished. Of course, you guys know, I was very happy re we released Bobby Wagner. I thought that was very much the right thing to do. But we now need to consider how we're going to replace him on the field. And obviously, Jordan Brooks had been the heir apparent. Jordan Brooks has played well the last two years, well enough at least to look like he's going to be an adequate heir apparent to Bobby Wagner. But now we need two. And that other inside linebacker spot, I don't know. Can Cody Barton do it? Um, Not really crazy about that idea. I'm certainly willing to give him a shot, but I wouldn't bet on it at this point. I'm not that impressed with him. And there are some things that you need to do a little bit differently as a 3-4 inside linebacker. I don't get the sense that Cody Barton's going to translate terribly well to that. And I look at the rest of the guys on this team who could potentially be considered. BBK is coming off a massive injury, and I don't think he's ever going to be able to do that kind of stuff. Um, Lockie M. Williams, not really much of a shot there. Aaron Donkor, probably not. So you're looking at Jordan Brooks, who I, I think he'll be fine. I think Jordan Brooks will be fine. I think he's going to be a solid inside linebacker in a 3-4, but he needs a partner. And it would not surprise me at all if the Seahawks went to the draft to try to find him. So we're going to take this video to evaluate the best inside linebacker prospects in this draft and see who, if any of them, makes sense. And obviously, I'm a little gun shy about using a top draft pick on one, but we'll explore all options anyway. All right. First up is Devin Lloyd of Utah. This is generally considered to be the best inside linebacker in this draft. He is a pretty golden prospect as far as inside linebackers go. Uh, I feel like the league has really devalued this position lately, but he is still universally considered a top 20 pick. Pretty much. Uh, 6'3", 237 pounds, 4.6640, 25 bench press reps, and he had three productive seasons, including the one season where COVID meant he barely played any games. Uh, 2019, 91 tackles, 11 for loss, six and a half sacks, a pick and two pass deflections. 2020, the shortened year, 48 tackles, 10 for loss, really, really good rate of plays made in the backfield, two sacks and a forced fumble. 2021, his best year, 111 tackles, 22 TFLs, seven sacks, ton of stuff happening in the backfield for this dude. Four interceptions, so he was great in coverage too. Six pass deflections and one forced fumble. And there is a lot of synchronicity with his big board placements. He is 13th through 17th on every big board I looked at, except for Walter Football. They have him at 32nd. But I think realistically he is going to go in the teens. So if the Seahawks make a moderately sized trade back, to the late teens, you may see Devin Lloyd be the pick. It would not surprise me at all. This is a Seahawk type of pick under Carroll. Now, just because it's a Seahawky type of pick doesn't mean I'm going to instinctively hate it because you guys know I don't have a high opinion of our drafting ability lately. But let's 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 talk about the Devin Lloyd thing because honestly, I have mixed feelings. <clears throat> so Devin Lloyd, solid athlete. He can play on all three downs. He's going to give you coverage skills on third down. He's going to give you pass rush skills on third down. It's 
it's not like a Jordan Brooks situation where you know his coverage abilities are somewhat limited. Um, he's somebody who can play effectively on all three downs in any situation. He can blitz up the up the A-gaps to get pressure on the quarterback. He can blitz as an edge player to get pressure on the quarterback. So he does offer a little bit of outside linebacker upside. He's a good zone defender. His four interceptions last year speak for themselves. He's a hard hitter. Solid tackler. He doesn't miss a lot of tackles. He plays with tremendous speed and a lot of smarts. He he understands things like run fits and he understands how to read a play as it's coming to him and deciding where to go and what to do based off what he's seen, what he's predicting will happen. Great at that, that kind of stuff. He kind of does it all as an inside linebacker. So I could absolutely see the Seahawks looking at him and making him their first round pick. The issues with him, he's not an amazing athlete, I don't think. He is a little bit stiff from time to time. He might fit better in a 4-3 defense. I say that because he's not 250 plus. I think inside linebackers in a 3-4 are typically a little bit bigger. He might fit better in a 4-3 defense like a Darius Leonard. And I believe he's a little older than the average prospect. There's a rumor that he's already 25. That has to take some of the the um, interest out of the picture. However, if the Seahawks traded down to the late teens and drafted Devin Lloyd, I, I don't think I'd be happy, but I don't know if I would be sad because I think he's going to be really, really good. I just don't want to spend another first round pick on an inside linebacker. I don't think they matter enough, but this guy's going to matter about as much as you can matter as an inside linebacker. He gives you everything. So I think Devin Lloyd is a guy who, if we traded back to like, say, 17 and drafted, I would be like, okay, sure. I wouldn't be upset. So that that's a heck of a thing for me to say because... On the surface, taking an inside linebacker in the first round this year should infuriate me, but I don't think this would. So, Devin Lloyd, awesome prospect, would not hate making him a Seahawk. Okay, next up we're going to do Nicobe Dean of Georgia. This is the other top inside linebacker prospect. A couple places actually think he's better than Lloyd. I don't, but he is a better athlete than Lloyd overall. Uh, Georgia, Bulldog, 5'11", 230 pounds. 4.5240 unofficially. I think it was done at a Georgia practice. He didn't run the comp. He didn't run the 40 at the combine. He has two seasons of a significant stat line: 71 tackles and a sack and a half, tackle for loss and a half in 2020, and then he broke out in 2021: 72 tackles, 10 and a half for loss, six sacks, two interceptions, five pass deflections, a lot of turnovers, a lot of plays made in the backfield. Great all-around linebacker in 2021. <clears throat> and most big boards have him in the first. The only one that doesn't is Walter Football. They have him down in the mid-second. But you are probably looking at a pick somewhere in the low to mid-20s. So in order for the Seahawks to get him, they would have to make a significant trade down to the 20s with their first round pick. And while I do think this is a pretty phenomenal prospect, I don't know if I like the fit as much because, again, even though for the most part, 4-3 inside linebackers can also play 3-4 inside linebacker. There are a couple of little nuances there. And N'Kobe Dean kind of puts me off that with some of the traits that he brings. Uh, he's the, the good things about N'Kobe Dean are that he quickly rallies to the ball at all times. He's got great closing speed, great athlete. He can inside blitz very effectively up the A-gaps. He's excellent in coverage. Makes plays in the backfield all day long. He's got great sideline to sideline speed. He, he can do a lot of great things like Devin Lloyd. He's going to give you run defense. He's going to give you coverage. He's going to give you QB pressure. He's going to give you plays. He's going to he's gonna do a lot of different things for you. <clears throat> the issues that I found with Dean were that he he's overly aggressive sometimes. He misses tackles more than a guy like Devin Lloyd. I think he can struggle a little bit to shed blockers. Like, if you get him blocked, he can get a little bit stuck. He's not one of these guys who's really good at shedding the blocker and getting to the ball carrier. And because of his relatively small size and because he struggles to shed blockers, I do think he's more of a 4-3 fit. I have to mention these guys because they're so good they could overcome it. 
but it needs to be said that they may not be exactly what we're looking for. All right, next up we have Chad Muma from Wyoming, a smaller school guy, but nevertheless an interesting prospect. 6'3", 240, 4.63, 40 times, 7.063 cone, 4.28 20-yard shuttle, pretty good measurables, 27 bench press reps, and he's got three years of significant experience at Wyoming, 2019, 51 tackles, three for loss, a sack. Uh, 2020, he had 71 tackles, eight for loss, three sacks, a forced fumble, pass deflection. 2021 was his breakout party, though, 142 tackles, eight tackles for loss, sack and a half, and three interceptions. So he gave you, he gave you a lot of production that year. And based off of that, you can see the big boards. Second round grade, second round grade, second round grade, second round grade. Everybody gives him a second round grade except for Walter Football. I think Walter Football really doesn't like inside linebackers very much. So if you take Walter Football out, everyone else has him in the second or very early third round. And there's a lot to like with Chad Muma too. I know there have been a few people in my uh, streams talking about him. He moves really well in space. He's going to be great playing in space. Great instincts against the run. An elite tackler, does not miss a lot of tackles. Fantastic all-around coverage skills. He can play man and he can play zone. And he's got good hands to bring in those interceptions when the opportunities come. And he was also the play caller for the Wyoming defense. And he had a high football IQ as that play caller. So, again, this is another guy who... I don't know if he gives you the blitz ability of a N'Kobe Dean or a Devin Lloyd, but he is giving you excellent play and coverage and great play against the run and leadership and all these other traits that you're excited to have from your inside linebacker. Um, the issues with Chad Muma are that while I do think he will eventually get to the point where he can play in a 3-4, that, that first year, maybe first two years, he's going to be more of a 4-3 guy. I think he might need to add a little bit of size and get a little bit better at shedding blockers and maybe become a more effective blitzer. I do think he will eventually grow into that, but initially maybe not. He does overrun some plays. Sometimes he gets a little aggressive on his um, angles and he has to improve his block shedding, like I said. That's something that he needs to get better at to play well in a 3-4. But Chad Muma would be an interesting guy that you kind of sit on and bring along for a year or two. And then hopefully by mid-year two to year three, you've got something really, really great. Okay, next up, we've got Christian Harris of Alabama, another top-end middle linebacker prospect. Alabama, 6'1", 226 pounds, so a little bit smaller. You're going to find that a lot of these top inside linebacker prospects are a little bit, maybe a little bit too small to play in a 3-4, but... We don't know exactly what kind of 3-4 we're going to be running, so I don't want to preclude any of them, right? We're switching to a new defense this year, so I don't want to rule anybody out based off priors. The main thing with Christian Harris is he's extremely fast. 4.44 40 time, that is basically the 40 time that Sauce Gardner, Johnson, Gardner ran. So very, very fast for a linebacker. Has three productive years, 61 tackles, 7.5 for loss. 2020, 79 tackles, 7 for loss, 4.5 sacks, an interception. 2021, 80 tackles, 11.5 for loss, living in the backfield, 5.5 sacks, 3 PDs, 2 forced fumbles. The big boards have him all over the second round, much like Muma. Um, if you look at all these uh, big boards, all of them are in the second round, except for, again, Walter Football, and they have him in the very, very high third. So... It's basically the same thing, right? Um, Christian Harris is a phenomenal athlete, obviously. This 40 time really speaks for itself. He's very strong despite his size and his speed. He's burly. He plays physically. He can handle man coverage. He's a good man cover corner. He hits hard. He can absolutely lay people out. He can play on all three downs. I, I believe um, he improved quite a bit as a third down linebacker in the most recent season. He's good at maneuvering around blockers, which is something that's going to be valuable in a 3-4 hypothetically. The issues with him are that even though I do think he will probably be fine in a 3-4, I do think he is a better 4-3 fit because of his size. He didn't always give maximum effort at Alabama. and That was something that wasn't a huge problem because they're Alabama and they have all the talent in the world. And 
I think he does need to develop better instincts as a middle linebacker to sn sniff out plays and snuff them out. Um, I, I do think he needs to become a little more cerebral of a player, but a very nice prospect. Okay, next up, we're going to Quay Walker, another Georgia linebacker. And this guy's pretty interesting because he's a little bit on the bigger side compared to some of the previous guys. 6'4", 241, 4.5240. So nice mix of size and speed right off the bat. The first thing you're going to notice with Quay Walker is he wasn't all that productive. 2020, he had 43 tackles, two for loss and a sack. And then in 2021, his best year, 65 tackles, five and a half for loss, a sack and a half, three pass deflections. So not big numbers at all. <clears throat> Despite that, the talent that Quay Walker displayed gave him a second round grade with four of the big boards and a third round grade with the other two, TDN and PFF. So this is probably a low second to high third round pick in all likelihood. The talent is undeniable even if the production is. He's an incredibly good athlete. Incredible agility, incredible ability to move in space and change direction. He covers a ton of ground, sideline to sideline. He will impact every aspect of your defense, rushing the passer, stopping the run, uh, coverage. He, he can do it all. He's going to impact every area of the, your defense. He hasn't played a ton of high-level linebacker football, so he's got a lot of room to improve. He's going to get a lot better just by virtue of the fact that he gains experience and maybe even gets a little bit bigger. He's quick to react to things. He's got a very quick reaction time where he sees the play developing and then he goes and chases it down. The issues with him are that he will need time to develop. I do think, again, I'm going to keep saying this. I know I kind of sound like a broken record here, but I think he can play well in a 3-4 as an insider but he's probably best as a 4-3 will linebacker. And given the fact that we've learned our lesson a few times here already, we don't want to be getting players if we're not going to be able to put them in the best possible position to succeed. We've done this before. It never works out. So it's possible that we might have to look at some of these guys like a Quay Walker and go, are we going to be able to get the most out of them? And um, also, I think his technique does need some work, just generally speaking. There are some inefficiencies in his game, but that makes sense, right? Like, that should be the case. He has two semi-productive years in college, and that's it. Big part of the problem is that Georgia's defense is so stacked with elite players that it's really hard to identify one person being way above the rest. And sometimes the stats aren't that impressive because the stats get shared between all these different players. So... Uh, Quay Walker is a guy who definitely has talent above the numbers he put up. So it, it's a bit of a gamble, but he is immensely talented. Okay, now we've got Damone Clark from LSU. Uh, 6'3", 239 pounds, 4.5740, so nice little 40 time here. 7.123 cone, pretty decent. Uh, three productive years at LSU. The first two years were good, 50 plus tackles, four tackles for loss each. But it was 2021 when he really broke out. 135 tackles, 15 for loss, five and a half sacks in the backfield all day, <clears throat> one interception, three pass defense. And he is a top 100 prospect on every big, big board I looked at, including Walter Football absolutely falling in love with him and putting him, and putting him in the first round. But all these other big boards have him in the third round. I think he's probably a third round guy. Should he be a third-round guy for the Seahawks? Well, the things to like about him are that he's a high-character guy. He was praised heavily at college for being of a high moral standard. Monster 2021 numbers, like I said. He's always giving high effort out there. He's got good versatility in terms of being able to affect the game as a run defender, pass rusher, and even some in coverage. He's an awesome athlete, very, very good switching directions, very, very good playing in space. He covers ground quickly, and he can even play a little edge rusher. You can put him on the outside on occasion, and he's going to get QB pressure. So if you want to mix it up with your hybrid defense, he might be a pretty decent option for that. However, there is a monumental red flag with Damone Clark, and that is he's not really going to play in 2022, almost certainly. He had a spine injury that required a pretty significant surgery. I can't remember all the details. I think there was some sort of a fusion involved. 
I don't remember exactly what it was, but the important part is he's not playing in 2022, and you don't know if it's going to affect him down the line. At the end of the day, are you willing to make an investment on a dude in the third round, even though you know he's not going to be there for you until 2023? Cowboys kind of did it with Jalen Smith, and it worked out for a little bit, but it didn't work out overall, and that's a lot of value to miss out on. So, Damone Clark is a guy who may very well have been a first-round pick like Patrick Queen had he gone, um, excuse me, had he not gotten injured like this, but he did. So now are you willing to spend a third-round pick on him and just live with that? Um, other than that, he only has the one big season. There were understandable reasons why, of course, but he still only had the one big year. And there were some coverage misreads in there. Nothing, I wouldn't call it anything terrible, but he does occasionally make missteps in coverage. I really like the player. I just don't know about actually letting him sit for a whole year. Okay, that's it for this first video. We took a look at some really nice prospects, six in total. We're going to do another six later today. I, I'm i really torn on this one, right? Because I love Devin Lloyd. He's awesome. But I really don't like spending that first round pick, even if we trade down on an inside linebacker. So mixed emotions. Uh, I will say that Chad Muma is pretty interesting to me. I think that he would fit into this defense well if you gave him enough time and if you got him in the second round or you could possibly even get him in the third round, I guess, then I think that would be something to get excited about. And it look, Damone Clark, knowing that he's not going to play in 2022 almost certainly, you don't know how far he's going to slip. Maybe he gets down to the fourth round and then you can keep take him and stash him. If that happens then that would excite me. A day three pick on a guy like Damone Clark, who was dominant that final year in college, who I do think would be a late first round pick, if not for the injury, I would do that. But um, again, it's just, you have to ask yourself, what is the position worth? And in the modern NFL, inside linebacker is starting to lose its value. And well, it already has. And I think it's just getting more and more extreme. All right, that's it for this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think. See you guys later on. Peace out. Go Hawks.